right, we're going to open a special meeting for selectmen Monday, April 22nd, 2024 at 6.04 p.m. Six o'clock in Okim. Yeah. <laughs> the pledge. Pledge of allegiance. To the flag, flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They walk one day. <laughs> I like it. I really do. This make, makes my back. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, highway department review on policy and safety hours. We've all read these Any comments, yep. ideas. The hours on the first one were 6 to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and on the last one was 6 to 4 p.m. What are the hours now in the summer? 6 to 4? It's been since 2014. That was 2014. Those are the actual hours that you now hold Monday through Thursday. Yeah. When do you take a lunch break? That was my next question. Okay. <laughs> that was my next question. Because it should be six to four thirty to account for the lunch break. Does everybody take a lunch break? Sometimes we do on the on the job. We'll take it on the job. We won't bother stopping. Most of the time, we don't take an afternoon coffee break, or sometimes we don't what we're doing, or a morning coffee break. I think um, the law says that, you know, anything over six hours, the employer needs to make available at least a 30 minute lunch break. Um, so I think <laughs> that's important that that be allowed to be scheduled. Otherwise, if we're not scheduling it, then it can look as though they're not being given the opportunity to take that mandatory break and we can get in trouble. And you can't say I'm going to just work less um, and forego a lunch. Um, so it does need to be built into the schedule. Okay. That's throughout, throughout every department. Oh yeah, if you work six hours, you have to be, get, the employer has to <clears throat> give a, a lunch, break. lunch break. Okay. No. I think of at least 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
not police and fire. Dirty sound. <laughs> nice. Because they can't. Go Public home safety. Home. They can't go home. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes we can't go home if we're plowing snow and stuff like that. We have to stay out all night sometimes. Mm -hmm. Again. But that's, you would get paid for your, you have to be paid for your, or you get paid. You get money. Yeah. I'd like to see whether we have police and fire exempt from that law. Federal law. Federal law? Yep. Section 207C. Can you print that out for me? I'll get yes. it to you. I've got it. Because I just, I just, I'm dumbfounded where, again, once again, that we are not in that same classification. And there's times we can't take a, a break mm -hmm. to go have dinner or whatever. Mm -hmm. We got to work through it. <clears throat> it happens more often than the other police and fire. I can tell you that. So I, I'm just I'm first of all, the, the, the feds aren't looking at the town of Ocam. No, okay. I know they're looking at cities like, like Boston. Said, Dawn, it's just one more Springfield. You know those kinds of cities. That's yeah. where they're making their laws from. And unfortunately, we're getting stuck under it. Yeah. You know where we should be because I'm. Well, from we it. And, and what happens? And I'm sticking up in my department. We get the the. the the raw end of the deal. Absolutely, all the time. You know, I've said this before. You guys are public safety, but they won't recognize you. But Kevin, the, the as the supervisor, you absolutely should be approving the thirty minutes that they weren't able to take a break. Break if they cannot take the break that the law says they're able to separate from the job. It's just they get paid. If that puts them over, it puts mm -hmm. them over. Yep. So if they don't take a lunch break because they're working. out in the roads, mm -hmm. busy and working, that means then they could leave at 3.30 rather than 4 o'clock? In theory. Mm -hmm. um, but, but. Are, are, who's instigating that? So is the employer saying, in order to avoid paying overtime, we're going to shorten your day? We can't say that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a huge risk. We can't say that. Uh, I mean, if the if the town believes the schedule needs to be seven to four, that's what we should be staffing. Six to four. Or what, I mean, yeah, I know. But like on the regular, uh, not during the, the summer. Yeah. Um, yeah. During the regular time, it should be. It should end up being overtime. Do just, we want to make any changes? Leave it as is. Well, I just want Kevin for the camera. Just give us why we do this. I know why, but so other people know. We asked this back in two thousand in nineteen ninety five. I presented it to the board. Gives us a longer day to construction wise, and I believe back then it might have been the two man department. So we spent more time shuffling equipment back and forth, but we still do. It just gives us a longer day to get more work done. And that was the reason why. And, you know, this paper I have here back in 1995, they tried on a, on a, a two-month period. And we've been doing it ever since. So they approved it back then. And then in 19, 2014, I used to write a letter to the board. Every, every year can we start our summer hours from this day to this day. So in 2014, I set it up as a standard operating procedure. From, from there on out, that is what our hours are, the first week of May till the Labor Day weekend. Sometimes it works out the end of April. I, I do it on a, on a full payroll, not a split. So sometimes it may, we might start April 28th or April 29th and up until Labor Day. I mean, it's a perk for, for the department. None of us take vacation from August, from October through till May. 
We don't go away all winter long. And there's nothing says that we can't. Mm -hmm. We never have. So now we, at the end of the fiscal year, we're scrambling. There's three of us that have at least seven weeks of vacation if we haven't used them. Mm -hmm. that we have to use between now and, and July 1 because we'll lose it. I mean, it's just a perk for, for the guys. That's it. Can you clarify that? You lose your PTO, your time off? Not pay, vacation time. You lose your vacation you time? You can't carry it over. can't carry it over. I believe that's in the bylaw. Well, earned time is usually earned time. Unless it doesn't apply to municipalities everywhere else, you're required to pay earned time. There is wording in the bylaw that says it can't carry from year to year. I just wonder if the Which state law overrides. Well, that's what I was wondering. I don't think that's legal to yeah. do that. But um. <clears throat> Don Harold, I was going to. Harold, that. Oh, Harold. It's one we don't give many perks, and that is one nice perk from Shad and I's aspect because we get the longer weekends to do stuff around home, and because we both have farms on the side too, so it makes it work. The longer weekend makes it easy for us, and we don't get much for benefit other benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the nice things we look forward to too. <clears throat> I had a couple questions. Um, so I you you explained the you know because of road work you have longer time. Um, to get things done. Are there other things that you're doing from six to seven that you wouldn't ordinarily be doing or from the three to four or four thirty that you wouldn't ordinarily be doing that you're now able to do because you have that extra time? How are you filling those voids? Well, six to seven, we'll get, get the equipment ready to head out the door. Yeah. Three to four, the same thing. You just, instead of Picking up at two o'clock to get everything back and, and your equipment back, and at the end of the day, you just you're doing it at three. You're adding more time. You just it's just two hours. Do you have any um, data on um, the amount of overtime that is being needed um, on all of these Fridays throughout the summer? I don't. Very seldom. Very seldom. That and, and there's no you know. There's no difference on if, if there's anybody available. It's no different than on Saturday or Sunday. If, if, and it's happened many times. I've been on vacation, then we'll have a tree come down. That's more than It's always yeah. covered. So it doesn't really matter if it's a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. There's coverage. Do you have a um, an on-call rotation? or No, there is nothing that says that we have any of us have to be around on a weekend. Right. Nothing. We do it. There's usually somebody around to cover that that issue, but we don't have an on call, so um, no, we really don't have to. You know, these guys live their life around the town of Oak Camp, Saturdays, Sundays, or whatever holidays, or whatever. And I guess my concern is, you know, is that a separate issue? But is that fair? What if someone doesn't live in Oak Camp? It would be unreasonable to expect them to be off somewhere in Maine at their camper and expected to come back to Oak Camp. Um, Fortunately, we don't have anybody that lives out of town. But it's the, no, po it's the policy. That, yeah. If this becomes the policy, then I think it, it's setting an expectation that you have to be available, <laughs> um, well, at least on that Friday. That's a whole different At least point. on that Friday. If you want us available, then you're going to have to pay an on-call somebody a hundred bucks or two hundred dollars per week and to hang around. Yeah, no, I'm I'm talking more about the Fridays. Right now, there's no expectation that anybody be available to work for the town on that Friday. We just ha we have it that there's someone out of the three of us, there is someone around. And if by chance there isn't anybody around and there's a tree comes down, the fire department will respond respond to that. Mm -hmm. Shed, Shed Wells. Most of the time on Fridays when we're going out the door, we will look and say, hey, I got something on Saturday, I got something or on Thursday, I have something on Friday, I won't be around. So we always communicate between three of us if someone's not going to be available on any given day. Make sure somebody's around to cover. So we always else. make sure, even though we don't have any um, like expectations or any benefit from it, we always make sure that someone is, covering is going to be there for the three days. That's the way it's always been. 
Mm-hmm. Even before these two guys here, my, you know, the employees we had before, we always, they would let you know, hey, I'm going to be, I'm gone for the Saturday, so no problem, we'll cover it. And it's always worked. We've always had each other, so it's never affected us any other way. Are there any other um, per diem employees that we have in case the three of you weren't around only during the winter? Very, very rare that, that there was not somebody here to answer a call. <clears throat> no matter how you look at it, 40 hours is 40 hours, whether it's 10 hour days or eight hour days or five. You guys are putting in 40 hours. Sometimes do it year round. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're right, some do. Most towns around, everybody does it, 40 hours. I mean, four days. Sometimes Probably not as small as ours. Sometimes they have the extra. Some of the guys love Monday up, some of the guys love Friday <clears throat> up. That's what Rutland does. Right. They have 11 people. To do it. Yeah, you don't. I think they have 11. Yeah. yeah. According to their budget, I looked at And that's short for one. <laughs> so. My only concern would be making sure that we're covering the our bases with the law and the um, making it available to employees that they have the option to to take a lunch break. And I agree that it is a perk. Um, Definitely. When, you know, insurance is up and rates are still on the lower end. Um, I only, I think that if we had other uh, full-time employees, um, it would be an equity issue if we weren't offering it, but because the only other full-time employees are exempt, um, except for the um, sergeant or yeah, sergeant, um, which we really can't do that. Um, then I would say we should do something with Fridays or Mondays, like other towns do where they have summer hours and the town hall might be closed. But when we have so few hours as it is, mm-hmm. I would be concerned about reducing those hours mm-hmm. for the public. Yep. And if we're meeting the public need and not having, I mean, in anecdotally, you don't think there's a lot of overtime use on a Friday, then it seems as though we don't have issues on Fridays. Um, so. Where we do not pay these guys, we do not provide the benefits these other towns provide. We, we got to give them something. Mm-hmm. And this is a perk for them. And they've had it since 1995. 1995. So why would we change this? <clears throat> It used to be done on an annual basis. Kevin would come the beginning of summer to every board for many years until they finally got the 2014 written this way. So it made it more permanent. I have copies of every single one of those letters that I've given to the board every year. Every year. Can we start this? And that's when 2014, Mm -hmm. we decided to just make it standard operating procedure. If somewhere you guys should have a copy of that paper I gave you. Yeah, we have them. Signed. Yeah, we, we have them. On the sign one? Mm-hmm. That's the one he gave me just with the sign. The same sign. Well, the names are on, but yeah. your signature is on it. Your signature is on all of them. That's when I presented it to the board. So somewhere in your records, your files, <clears throat> should be the copy with the three members of the board on it. Go back and watch the Zoom. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't see a need for somebody to come every year and ask for this. If we're going to make a general policy, we should make a general policy and sign off on it and put it in the policy book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the future boards can see mm-hmm. that this is what we do. But just because we do it again, it has the same policy. Another board could change it. 
any board could change any policy. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think Throughout most the policies year, so that's should the one thing you have on to pay an pay basis. attention to. Mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of the policies in that book do say is that they'll be evaluated every yes. year, every two years. Yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's two years. I think it's three years. Okay. So we're we're due. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does the board want to make any changes in this or they keep it the way it is? I would just say that it does need to account for the 30 minute lunch break. And the, the time frames, first week of May till first week of September, is it through Columbus Day? I think that needs to be confirmed. Last few years, we brought it to Columbus Day. It's just, you know, the short, is a, you know, if you look at the weather, September is a great month. It's a, it's a summer month. It just gives them a little longer before all the bad weather starts, and we're strapped, strictly strapped to the town of Oakham. Um, so as far as um, edits to it, I would say that because of the new payroll tracking system, um, the first um, full pay period beginning at the beginning of May and concluding at including Columbus Day weekend. Through Columbus Day week. Yep. That pay period. Period ending. Yep. Inclusive of the Columbus Day weekend. And the hours for the day. Six to four thirty. And that this policy will be reviewed every three years or subject to a call of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we put in about the, um, they must have the 30 minute lunch? I think that's already in the law and it's hopefully in the law, our, but it's not printed hopefully our policy. I'm, I know our policy manual well, talks manuals. about that. Yeah. yeah. And that's really a responsibility of the supervisor to right. ensure that. And approve it if it can't be. Right. Okay, do we have a motion? So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Only got to pay for another sixty days. So, and and honestly, I this was new, brand new to me too. <clears throat> so it was an opportunity for me to understand uh, this policy. That's part table. Hmm. Oh, sure. Do we have a um, a fresh copy of that that we could show to the people just being interviewed today? 
fresh copy of the policy we just did. Oh, well, I have this one. I mean, it's not fresh in the set. Yeah. But it's not. With well, I just think, I just think that those being interviewed today should all have equal access to it mm -hmm. before the yeah. interviews. Right. But that's not what the edits made. And Mr. Chairman, if I could, when, before we ask the questions, I was, there was something I'd like to say as a introduction to my questions. Okay. Okay. Could you give that to Mr. Stanton so that he is aware? Of... You're welcome. Are we going to have preparation time for this or are we just going to have your Introduction. I, um, you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is from my perspective, although it, it could, certainly could be shared by others. Um, but I just offer that, um, you know, in my uh, 18 years of professional leadership experience, I've been part of hiring a lot of people uh, and terminating a couple. Um, I recognize that uh, the gravity of the decisions um, that are uh, in front of us today. Um, OCAM has a 56 year history of having two highway superintendents. Um, and that's pretty significant. And so that's the gravity, I think, of this decision that we have. Um, I take this responsibility seriously to be objective. Um, I know that I need to make an informed decision on what I feel is in the best interest of our residents and taxpayers and be sure that it's based upon the information gained from what I've heard in what will be now two interviews and on the legal application, and then based upon the references provided upon an offer. Any knowledge of possible incidents or background information from any other sources or individuals um, can't be considered if I'm to be fair for the, to the hiring process. I'm grateful that we have um, two candidates who have agreed to come back and help us in our search for the next highway superintendent. We are fortunate that we have these two candidates who are clearly capable of the hands-on labor portion of the highway department job. As this is a director management level position and not only a frontline worker position, it is important to me to see that there, where there is either satisfactory experience or evidence of an ability to work independently, leading a almost $400,000 municipal budget manage high visibility projects such as road repairs and snow plowing, which have a direct impact on public safety. Additionally, be capable of seeing to the completion of grant applications that will assist an already very limited town budget. This individual must be able to plan and execute a budget and the staff of the department, supervise the staff of the department. In my opinion, the person hired needs to understand that with only a part-time board of selectmen that provides what should be essentially policy direction as OCAM's chief executive, the day-to-day -day operations and decisions of all things under the highway department will essentially be left in the hands of the person selected for this role. These operational responsibilities include ensuring the maintenance of our physical equipment and human resources, making sure they are operating effectively and safely. As we proceed with these interviews, I hope each candidate will take the opportunity to showcase their skills, expertise, and vision for the future of our highway department. We need to select a candidate who not only possesses the necessary technical knowledge and experience, but also demonstrates the necessary leadership qualities, effective communication skills, and a commitment to outcomes that will deliver excellent results for OCAM. <clears throat> hey, it's John Stanton. Hello, yes. Come on over. Welcome back, John. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let Lucy lead off with her questions. Mrs. Stanton, now that you have seen the physical plant at the highway department. 
What do you imagine would be the first thing you would change to make the department more efficient and to be of benefit to OCAM and all our residents? Probably equipment. Um, Kevin showed me around um, this. Being in charge of water the way I am now, a $3.5 million budget, um, public safety is one. Um, Kevin is literally a superhero for what he does there. Um, the, I would probably try to at least start to upgrade some of the equipment where you don't need a park truck hanging out with that. But I do realize what Kevin's doing. You have to divide the money up evenly, roads, equipment, et cetera. So for what he's doing is amazing. So you understand this is not an easy job. I, again, he's Brand. wearing the wrong jersey. It should have an S on the front. <laughs> so, no joke. Then you mentioned about upgrade of some of the equipment. What is the first piece of equipment or office product that you would imagine you would purchase for the highway department? That Oshkosh has got to go out back. I just don't think you should have a, a main... Even though, the, even though they're very reliable, I know a lot about them. Most of my family's in the military, so I know all about, I know I'm fully with them. What is this Oshkosh? It's Oshkosh. a military plow unit they have oh. out back. Um, it's very difficult to get parts for, so they do have a parts truck. Um, I can see definitely having that, but being as one of the primaries. But again, if it runs good, I mean, I don't know. So there's just, that sticks out first thing. I know there's a lot of grants out there. When I was in East Brookfield, we had the international grant. Um, so they bought trucks relatively inexpensive, but they were at least new. Not that OCAM has the budget for that, but, and Kevin was telling me about places he does buy stuff used, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I would definitely try to upgrade some of the equipment because the roads are fantastic. Yes, they are. We're very proud of our well, roads. Rise and you can feel when you leave North Brookfield and get into Oakland. Yes. You can, <laughs> you can just feel it in your vehicle. I think we've yeah. all been proud of our roads. Yeah, no doubt. The upkeep of Absolutely. our roads throughout the years. We've been very, very fortunate. Yep. Do I continue or do you want? I can continue. continue. Okay, thank you. Are you comfortable with the long hours necessary, sometimes 12 to 24 hours, especially in the winter and in times of emergencies and being on call 24 seven, your telephone will never be shut off. It doesn't shut off now. So yes, I'm very familiar. You gotta remember now I'm in the more water now than I was highway and it is more important than ever that my phone doesn't stop ringing because ingesting water is Unbelievable. It's primary. It's a little more important than roads, actually, but a little more difficult, so, probably, then. Very difficult, yes. Okay, and thank you. Do you clearly understand that this position is for a working superintendent slash laborer? And are you willing and able to prioritize your hours efficiently for office office work with enough hours to be on job sites working with your staff? That means keeping up with paperwork, technology, and going out for bids, Chapter 90, fuel grants, setting a budget, and attending town meetings, and defending your expensive budgets, because they will be expensive, that is our most expensive department in town, in front of the voters, and to explain your costs. Whatever it takes. If you look at my face, I was out with the boys today. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very familiar with that. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> How do you deal with upset residents complaining about road conditions or plowing conditions and the work and people who like to work on the south side of the road that are actually working in some lanes that belong to the town? Uh, it depends on the complaint. Depends on what they're doing. Depends on how bad the road is. Sometimes roads can get away from you. Sometimes, I mean, you guys got 49 miles of road, Kevin said. So, so if there's a complaint, you check it out. If you got to deal with it, you got to deal with it. I'm definitely uh, familiar with talking to the customer. You have to, especially when it comes to water. If they think there's this smells and that smells and my water tastes funny, you, can, you have to talk to the customer. 
What is your knowledge of the Wetland Protection Act and your responsibility to protect the wetlands? Um, I'm not too familiar with the Wetlands Act. I do know what it means for us. Um, and it's extremely important. We have zone one, zone two, and zone three, so we mm -hmm. protect our well. Um, so I'm very, very familiar with that. There's going to be a lot of stuff that I need to absorb. What Kevin was showing me, what he actually does is, again, amazing. So I told you guys in the first, it'll be a, a learning curve to sure. absorb Chapter 90, all that paperwork, because right now I'm familiar with DEP, which is actually, I've heard that it's a little, actually a little more difficult than it is chapter 90. Because you're actually talking about chemicals, you're talking about dosage, you're talking about things that go in people's mouths. So they're extremely strict on paperwork. So it'll, I'm sure it'll be just a learning curve. I don't think it'll be a struggle. What is your philosophy of maintenance so as to keep our expensive equipment longest life possible? Uh, well, right now, I use uh, the work I'm at now. We do have maintenance logs. We have we have even have a whiteboard uh, in the shop where if oils need to be changed, um, every truck is its own binder, so we know when the oil has been changed, when it's been greased, everything possible to try to keep the maintenance so to keep the maintenance costs down for the machines. Do we do we like the whiteboard comment? <laughs> uh, and as far as winter plow drivers go, um, this year we had the possibility of running out of plow drivers. Some were not going to be re-enlisting. How would you go out to look for others? Um, you know, over 20 years in the municipality, I do have connections, so I could go that route. But if we have to advertise, we have to advertise. Public safety is important. With only th three guys and God, 50 miles of road, I mean, Kevin was telling me, you guys, it's crazy. It's crazy. When I worked in East Brookfield, we had four. And there's only 20 miles of road, seven miles of dirt road. So mm. uh, uh, when Kevin gave me the tour, I'm blown away. And considering that Oakham is dependent on good well water, what would you consider to be the proper ratio of salt to sand? Well, I mean... Right now, I'm sure you guys are running a 50-50 mix. Um, that's what we've always done when you when you run sand assault. That's usually the best way. Um, well protection, it depends on where your wells are. Um, you know, it's you also have to, there's, a, there's a fine line where you have to keep the road safe. And if you know wells like I do, just because your well is next to the road doesn't mean the aquifer is next to the actual asphalt. So, right. Right. Okay. So, there's a lot I know about that. We can get into that all day long, but it depends on where the well is. It depends on where people think the aquifer is. It depends on the whole bunch of stuff. It really does. Because a lot of people don't realize that aquifers are usually nowhere near where your well is, where the actual absorbent is. Okay. So be very concerned what's downstream, per se. And that would come under Wetland Protection Act, some of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with that, we do have the Conservation Commission. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I am finished. Aaron, you only took two of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, hoping to take all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, can you describe a time when you had to manage a crisis or emergency? How did you handle it? Were there things that you did well or things that and things that you might do differently in the future? Uh, I mean, I can tell you the same story I told you before, but I've had a water main break where I've tried to call guys in. They didn't show up. Um, I've had to discipline them. I've had to call more guys in and you have to just keep going until it's fixed, regardless whether you like it or not. Um, I've had water main break take uh, 32 and a half hours. So sometimes you can't get the valves off. Sometimes you can't fit. You just have to go until it's fixed. So as a supervisor. Um, they were disciplined afterwards, if that's what you're getting at. No, no. So, <laughs> um, you know, there's there's more than just the discipline. So there's yep. the managing of 
you know, the staff. Yep. Um, is there anything uh, that you would do differently in the future? Um, maybe your approach to that situation. I mean, no, I try to be as professional as boss as possible. So if you're answering the phone, you tell me you're going to show up and you don't, then there's discipline afterwards. Um, as that, he didn't show, so I keep calling. I even So we have a rotation, who's on call and who isn't. So I called the guys that weren't on call, told them the situation. They were nice enough to come in. So there's, I've had to call subcontractors in because <laughs> we couldn't handle it. Too many guys on vacation. It is what it is. You need to call someone else. Mm -hmm. um, whether I could do that in this town, who knows? Because it depends on the budget, depends on the situation. We're not tree guys, so if a tree fell down the wires, you call National Grid. You know, there's a whole bunch of scenarios you could do, but yeah. In what ways would you work work to ensure that highway projects are completed within budget and on schedule? Well, you, you just try to do the best you can. You try to do the quotes the best you can. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things you don't see. If, uh, let's say you're putting a drainage and you don't know that this, I'm sure we can't afford boring here to find out what's underground. You could hit ledge. So the budget could go over it because you have to jackhammer. But could you save money on decreasing the size of the drainage pipe? So it's not as deep. So there's many ways you could do it. We've had that issue. We did borings and we were supposed to put in a $6.8 million plant and uh, they did borings in all the wrong places because where they did borings, it was perfect. <laughs> and when we started putting the building in, we found ledge. <laughs> so they were more concerned where the water main was going. How will you approach staff management, support, training, and accountability of your team. Additionally, how will you actively set an example with safety and ensuring safety in work practices is followed by your staff? Well, safety is number one, PPE is number one. I don't know what we have for a budget here, but the guys should be wearing reflective stuff all the time, regardless whether they like it or not. A lot of them guys don't like, a lot of my guys don't like it because it's sticky and it's hot. So I give them vests. The vests have to stay on, um, especially when they're in the road. I don't know if you guys were been around long enough, but North Brookfield got pinched many years ago. They had two trucks on 67. They were patching holes, and two trucks got too far apart. The old guy came in like this and rear-ended, and one of the guys got borderline crippled. So there's a lot to think about when it comes to safety and keeping the guys safe. Um, I have files. I keep track of every guy who has to be updated on their license in case they're not due diligent on that. Um, we all have to keep our licenses up. So every two years, DOT, um, for my guys, it's also water too. So it's every two years also for your water license. It's basically two years for everything. It's how Massachusetts likes to do it, but it's all kinds of things you can do. How will you actively set the example? Uh, by showing them I'm doing the same thing. I have all the licenses they do. Sorry, with not, safety. Not more. With safety. Same with me. I, I don't want to get hit in the road. I'll be wearing safety too. I'll be working with them anyway. So, How will you approach uh, management of staff, support, and training? Again, I have, I have files to keep track of them. So, um, in my case, in a lot of my guys' cases, I don't know if you guys know this, but water licenses are similar to plumber and electricians. We have to have actually contact hours. You have to have schooling and class. So I have files to keep track of when we all need class and training. It's usually every two years, depending on their license. It'd be the same thing with highway. Same thing with the guys. Same thing. Keep track of their licenses. Try to help them, support them, show them that I'm doing the same. How would you show support? Make sure I give them classes to go to. Um, making sure they get their stuff done by reminding them.
can you provide an example of a successful improvement or innovation you implemented in a previous role? Uh, we did uh, 1,200 feet, 12 inch water main. Um, it was on a back road. Uxbridge went by the engineers. I thought 12 inch was overkill. Um, if you do the math of consumption versus fire protection and what's actually going in there, we decreased the water main to the 10 inch, which saved the town thousands and thousands of dollars. When you go from 10 to 12, ductile iron, it's ridiculous. $125 right now a foot to be installed. And that doesn't include anything. Fill doesn't include maintenance, doesn't include pressurized, doesn't include bleach, doesn't include anything. So you decrease the water main size. What, um, what thought processes, what um, methods of making a case um, did you use to get them to change their approach? The consumer consumption versus fire flow. So consumer cons consumption, the average household where we are right now, um, is two and a quarter people. The two and a quarter only um, does about 35 to 36 gallons a day, period. Do you know how much a 12 inch water main holds? One stick of, the, of, of uh, 20 feet long? It's way, way more when you only have, I think there was eight houses on that street. So when you decrease that water main size, you still have a hydrant six inch. No hydrant is any bigger than six inch, they're all standard six inch. You can only suck six inches of water out of that in layman's terms. So having a 12 inch water main was overkill, way overkill. So we decreased the 10 inch, which I might add everything in the neighborhood was 10 inch, but the they were trying to think of upgrades eventually, which I got and I get the engineers, but there's only so many lots on the street. So regardless of how many lots are on the street versus how much consumption versus fire flow, there's no need for to incre just increase that one street when everything around it's 10. Because you're only going to get 10, regardless of whether you like it or not, just because one street's 12. Because those 10 inch streets are feeding that one 12 inch thing. And um, how did you sell that? Uh, exactly like I just did to you, explaining that to them. Um, uh, thankfully, um, in the bigger cities where, where I am, they have some people that have knowledge, a lot of knowledge. And the engineer was there and he did agree. And he did admit that he was thinking of future <clears throat> expansion. So it was a combination of, yes, the engineer said, yeah, we can still do 10 inch. Yeah, all the streets around there are still 10 inch. So um, <clears throat> we convinced him. Hope I didn't take any of yours. <laughs> Did we use up all yours? We used all mine, so. <laughs> no. so. <laughs> <laughs> you realize you have three people full time. Yes, okay. I, I, I've been thinking about my tour since I left. So yes. What would you think of expanding duties to include five cemeteries for maintenance with the staff you have? No. Would I try it if the town wanted it? Of course, but something's going to give. So, so you think that would be overkill? I think it would be overkill. I think it would be smart depending on what you have. So I'd have to see, do you guys have a cemetery commission? Do you guys have a budget for that? Mm -hmm. And do you pay people to mow the grass now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so have you weighed the odds of hiring one more man on the highway versus getting rid of the cemetery I, staff? I, they, they don't know anything about this. Okay. Well, that's what I would look at. I would look at the benefits of hiring the fourth guy. Long term would be that's one less part timer you have to hire when we're plowing. According to Kevin, we have more than enough equipment. So if you made a versatile guy that mows cemeteries, but when he's not mowing, he's helping the highway too, it's a win win as long as the numbers crunch, because I do realize that health insurance. 
yeah. the benefits, all that stuff is you have to weigh that in. Right. Because that is costly also. Okay. But it depends on how many part timers you have mowing that grass. <clears throat> you know? I mean the town does own it. I'm just, I'm assuming the cemetery has their own equipment. Mm -hmm. No. So cemetery doesn't. Well, Kevin showed me they do have a basically new zero turn. So I mean, as long as it's well maintained, I don't know how much else you guys mow, but it'd be thought food for thought. You'd have to crunch the numbers, see if it's worth it. Okay. Specifically, what type of training do you want your people to go through yearly? Safety. Yeah. I think oh, safety sure. is yeah, I think safety is huge. Um we all get that way, and I know I do too. When there's an emergency or something's happening, you just want to fix the problem. You want to get in the trench and get it done. But you need reminders all the time that a trench collapses on a man's legs. He only has minutes before he loses his legs. So this safety is huge in my book, especially in my, in my field right now. Not that I'm not familiar with highway and plowing and all that stuff because I've done it for decades and decades and helping Spencer out during COVID and everything else. But uh, we have chemicals that that we add to the water that make it safe to drink, but in raw form, it feels slimy. Yeah. But that's really your skin coming off yeah. immediately. Mm -hmm. So in our business, PPE and safety is a must. You get splashed once, you're blind, period. There's no coming back. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. The only other question I have is why why should we hire you? I feel with my experience, uh, my experience of over two decades of highway and water, um, dealing with municipality, dealing with customers. Um, I believe I definitely have the skills that you guys are looking for. I grew up in a small town of Brookfield, never left, so I get the whole idea of small town life. So. Also, any follow-ups? Yeah. Um, how would you contribute to a uh, fun atmosphere amongst the team? How would you build team uh, if you were the superintendent? Um, you know, that's... <laughs> That can be a difficult subject because there's you don't want to be too friendly with your staff members um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do um my staff members now we're not supposed to have christmas parties we're not supposed to have any of that but we do anyway so there are things you do to try to help the staff that makes them feel wanted and makes them feel like they're appreciated so there are some things you can do with the approval of of the higher ups um we approved in spencer for instance the town administrator would not allow parties because uh, it's costly for the town but as long as we did it on lunch break and as long as everybody chipped in and made something we had a party so there's ways you can make your employees be appreciated. You know, on long, long overnights when we do water main breaks or we're plowing snow, we buy food, we do all kinds of stuff. So, own pocket. <clears throat> Where I am now, management is huge. So, is the management is actually almost as much as the Indians. We have just as many chiefs. So um, the last Christmas, we actually all chipped in money and we bought presents and we actually did. So it didn't come out of the budget, came out of our pockets. And uh, we did grab hat. Oh, so, mm. yeah. And you're not technically a municipality in your position now, 100% right? not. Right. No. So. That's why I'm looking for another job. Yes. Yeah. They pay me very well. <clears throat> so it's not because of the money. Um, it is two things. Number one, it, they are 100% not municipality. So I left a 20-year retirement in the dust. So, um, yeah, they got a 401k. 
and I'm contributing to, you know, um, I'm contributing to uh, Social Security, but you, I don't know if you all know, they dock you, your Social Security, if you have yep. too much. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter, really. I'm, in my opinion, I'm going backwards. So, mm-hmm. plus I hate the 45, 50 minute ride, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David, do you have anything else you wanted to tell us? No. No. Also. Any other questions you have for us now? Uh, no. I mean, if you guys pick me, then we can discuss. The, I don't know what you guys have for, for a proposal. I have no idea. So the only thing I know is what you guys put on there for salary wise and stuff like that. So, okay. Very good. good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, John. Yep. Okay. You guys need this? Uh, yeah, we get to keep it. Okay. Just want to yeah. show you that. I'm familiar with summer hours, so yeah. Okay. 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 Great. I'll be in Thank touch. You. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Harold, you're up next. I go first again. Yep. You can cut down on some of yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I only have four. No, you have yeah. more than four. Okay. You have like three inside of one. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harold. Now that you have worked at this plant for many years. Nope. What do you imagine would be the first thing that you would like to see changed or to make the department more efficient and to be of more benefit to OCAM and our residents? I'd like to continue on what Trevin's been doing with trying to get grants and he's done a real good job making the town, keep the town perfect, as close to perfect as he can with a little money, eventually upgrade to a capital plan, try to upgrade some of the trucks. If some of the trucks getting old, the 96 is one of the frontline trucks. So that's something we're going to have to look into eventually. So what is then the first piece of equipment that you feel or product from the office that you feel you would like to purchase for the highway department for you to use? I think we'd have to look into replacing the 96 because that's getting old and that's one of the frontline trucks. Now it goes out every every storm on the pre-sand. That's, the, that's one of the first trucks. The okay. first three trucks go out. Are you comfortable with the long hours necessary, sometimes 12 to 24 hours in winter and in times of emergencies and being on call 24 seven? Your phone will never be shut off. Yes, I've done it for 10 years full time and I think it was eight years part time. Kevin called me during some of the storms of a job that I was doing, going and help and do what was needed. Do you clearly understand this position is for a working superintendent laborer? And are you willing and able to prior to prioritize your hours effectively for office work as well as having enough hours to be on job site working with your staff? That means keeping up with your paperwork, technology, going out for bids, chapter 90, fuel, grants, setting a budget, attending town meetings and defending your expensive budgets in front of the voters to explain costs. Yes. Be able to go out and go to the town meeting and speak to defend if we're going for a new piece of equipment, get up and stand up and explain why, what we need to replace it. Keep update the town. If they need the, any information on why we're doing it. And... Okay. How do you deal with upset residents when they're complaining about road conditions and or plowing and working when they want to do work on the sides of the road that doesn't really belong to them, but belongs to the town? Go talk to them nicely and try to explain why we, we, they can or can't do what they're doing and give them the reasons and try to just stay calm with them and keep everything calm and collective. What is your knowledge of the Wetland Protection Act and your response to protect the wetlands of Okim? Anytime we're doing any call at work, we have to file it with the Conservation Committee. We have to stay 100 feet away. 
think anything within 100 feet, we have to file it with the Conservation Committee. What's your philosophy of maintenance? So as to keep our equipment to have the longest life possible. Keep doing what we've been doing, increasing about every thousand miles for the trucks and every 5,000 for oil changes. We're going to keep document everything for every, keep everything documented for each truck. We have a fold that's added. That way, that's, whatever we do, we can always write it down and keep a receipt for it. So if something happens later on, we can go back and look at it. And how would you ensure that we have enough drivers or plows to do our roads in winter when this year we might have had a shortage if it hadn't been such a good winter? That looking early, like in September, October, start get, trying to line people up early to be prepared. Try to, if not, get some hired contractors if we can't find enough locals. Okay. But try to find locals that we can, that is qualified to put in our trucks and we have the equipment. And what does the town use as its ratio of salt to sand? It's a little less than 50-50. I thought so. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. Can you describe a time when you had to manage a crisis or emergency? How did you handle it? What were the things you did well? And what might you do differently in the future? I haven't really done any big crisis, but there's been a few times Kevin's been gone. We've had some windstorms come through, a bunch of trees come down, communicated with the different departments, letting them know, letting fire and police know what's closed, getting hold of them, getting, letting dispatch know so they can get a hold of the national grid to get the trees cleared off the lines. If it's not on the lines, we clear it and get it off the side and mark cone it off and go back later to clean it up. Is there anything you would do differently? I think we've done, I haven't done big, probably big disasters, but we pretty much do it the same way. It'd just be more expansive. If it was a bigger disaster, or <laughs> bigger ice storm like we had in 2008. Um, in what ways would you work to ensure highway projects are completed within budget and on time? Make sure we work as a team, make sure we have everything somewhat scheduled to the best that we can, have all the pipe on, have everything on scene if we can ahead of time. So as everything's needed, we can have everything to lay right, fall right into place. If we're doing a cut cross call with it, make sure we got the pipe on either on the job, if it's safe to keep it on the job, but have it up the garage, then bring it down to the job site, depending where we're doing the job. Some spots is not safe to leave the pipe on the side of the road for a period of time. Um, how will you approach staff management, support, training, and accountability? Additionally, how will you actively set the example with safety and ensuring safety in work practices followed by your staff? Always make sure everybody's safe. Make, I want everybody to go home to their family at the end of the day. Make sure we have all, we always wear our vests so we've seen on the road, because cars never slow down. Sign to always put our signs out to try to warn the cars, but sometimes, but make sure everybody goes home at night to their family. And always make sure if we're doing something in the shop, safety glasses, if, we, if it's, make sure. Don't want anybody to get hurt. Everybody always. And if it's on the main road around bad corner, have a, get a detail officer. To... Um, how about um, uh, managing staff, providing staff support and training? Always talk to them. Always meet, help them keep the get the continuing ed lined up to, for continuing ed for our house and license. We have to do that every two years. It's a two I think a two hour class we have to take online to keep our light. Uh, hoisting license, make, uh, remind them about medical cards. Mine, I think we're all every year. Most of the two years or years, depending on your situation. But always keep that documented. So we set, set reminders and help the staff to remind them, renew them because 
if we don't keep them renewed, then we lose our CDL and can't then can't drive. Can you provide an example of a successful improvement or innovation, something that you did outside the box um, in a previous role, a current role or previous role? Done a bunch of searches. We've had successful searches with the fire department. We found, helped find that little boy that went missing on off a bullet on uh, Edson Road. We we're just the crew I was with. We just about found. We we're almost there. Then one of the troopers found with the dog. That was one of the good ones. But a bunch of other ones, but not really. That that's the one that comes to mind first. That was my fourth question. I, I just want to follow up on something he just he just asked. <clears throat> you were in the fire department at the time, that lost child. Yes, that was you were the lost. highest ranking officer there for the fire. At the beginning, yes. For the fire, yes. So you were coordinating all this? Russ, I let I let Russ take court command because I knew the area some, so I went out on the ATP searching. Okay. So Russ actually had command and he was communic I was communicating back with Russ. So you worked as a team? Yep. We all were. A lot of times during the day, it's Russ and, and Russ and I on calls. It was the house on the fire on Hunt Road. It was Russ and I that showed up first, and Barry came in right behind us, and I ran the pump, and Russ knocked it down and went up on the line behind him. And we saved that house, so it just damaged the garage. Again, training and teamwork. Yep. Everything being a small town, we all have to work together, make everything work, and communicate with everybody. And, Uh, like I asked the previous candidate, um, <clears throat> with the staffing you have, could you work out a plan to do the five cemeteries with the staffing that you have, not adding anybody? It'd be real tight to do it because between the roadside mowing during the summer, I don't think it'd be too much to ask. But as he basically put the words out of my mouth, that I would put, if we put a fourth guy on, that they could almost do the summertime maintenance of the cemeteries. Then we, we'd have that fourth guy for the plow and wouldn't have to try to find that we one less we'd have to hunt down every year. For that, if we hired a part time person just for the summer months, do you think that would work? I think it would, but because I know there's only one guy that does it now, but I'm not sure how much time he puts in or what the expense is to it. I'm not sure with the equipment we have. I'm not sure what the widths are behind between the gravestones. I'm always maybe too big to go down the rows between the gravestones too. And there's also a lot of handwork with the weed whacking. He, the guy that does it, does a real nice job. He puts a lot of time into it, yeah. keeping it nice. Why should we hire you? I know the town. I know it most. Been full time ten years, part time for a while. So I know I know the procedure. I want to keep the Kevin's got a real good reputation of knowing what he wants everybody to know where the town line is, and I like that. And I want to continue <laughs> that. You know where the town line is without seeing, looking for the sign. Just look at the road. Whether it's during the summer or the, during the winter with the snow conditions or the road conditions, during the, come out on a smooth road. No snow or anything on the roads. Have you talked to any superintendents in the area? A little bit. This couple that said they would help if I needed some. They did. Mm -hmm. Okay. My wife's uncle's on I, the advisory board in Barry. Okay. So, so you have resources that you can reach out to if you get stuck on something. Mm -hmm. yeah, but everybody, I know Kevin bounces ideas off of the surrounding ones. And everybody works. The surrounding towns all work good together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost, it's not really, it's almost mutual aid, just like the fire department's right. working out. Right. I know sometimes we borrowed equipment from other towns and they, we, everybody works together. That's how you're successful. Mm -hmm. right. And it's been proven. Everybody, because some of the pieces of equipment we can't afford to buy and they can't afford, so we swap back or if, yeah. need, if needed, work together. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? I don't think so. If you'd pick me, 
discuss stuff. Everything else further, it's closed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any follow ups? How would you build team and have fun? Try to make sure we have food and stuff during the winter and keep everybody, make sure everybody's happy and keep some joy in the world and the shop, go out to eat for holidays if we could. You know, we could do done that now and something to look forward to. Just go sit and mingle a little bit and enjoy a meal. Do things, do whatever we can to keep the spirit. Any yeah, I think I do just have one. Okay. How do you see yourself as a manager managing the people that are working for you? I think I can do it. It's going to be a learning curve, but I know I can do it and I'll work with Shad or whoever else. If we, if I get the job, we'll have to replace my position. Teach, I'll teach them everything I learned from doing it. Just work as a team and continue on. But in a small department, we all have to work and bounce ideas off everybody and work together. <clears throat> but you're comfortable making the final decisions on, on whatever you want to see done. Do you see any of your fire lieutenant management skills being transferred into this? I'm sure some of it will. We don't have a lot of, we had tall small calls, but it all been tricky. And I'm sure yep. we'll all come together and I'll take some training in that. And doesn't matter what yep. side you're on, you do the same thing. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Do you have anything else? I don't have anything else. Thanks, Harold. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thoughts, ideas, suggestions. You should have brought food. <laughs> Let me ask this Is the board ready to make a decision tonight? Um, I think if a decision need, needed to be made, uh, I'm not sure that any more time would make a difference. I don't think I need to talk to them again. I, I'm, I'm satisfied with everything we have done. We've had the first interview, which I was, as you all know, I was not happy with. I liked having them go see. I think we got more from them from seeing our actual working experience and the plant where they will be working. And then I did get more information tonight from my questions and everybody's questions that I didn't have before, which I thought was very interesting. And I appreciate having the more information given to us. So are we comfortable making a nomination? Well, it doesn't say that on the agenda. It doesn't say possible vote. Yeah, right, it doesn't. If it's not on there, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't either. That was the one thing I thought, and I said, well, 
gives us a little more time to think about it or I, I don't know, like I kind of agree with Aaron too. I don't know that anything's going to change on any of our minds. Yeah, probably not. So I think for legal reasons, the 29th is our next meeting. It is the 29th, next Monday. That would be the meeting that we would make a decision. Make a decision and make the offer. Can we vote by, by paper? You do it any way you want. <laughs> is that legal? I don't yeah, know. It is. is it really? It's part of the record, though. You'd have to keep yeah. that in with the yeah. minutes. Okay, so we'll um, put it on for appointment, um, recommendation for appointment on the 29th. Would we have the package ready for them by that time? Salary, hourly, whether hourly or salaried? We'd have to go into negotiations once the offer is made and accepted. Okay. okay. So that means background check, reference check. It's going to be everything. Terms. Yes. So I was wondering if we would hold it, you know, with forty-eight hours posting, um, sooner than Monday, so that that could then be scheduled for that Monday. So today's Monday. Wait a minute, I'm lost. I got confused. So. Um, have a, a meeting to make a vote to make this vote. week so that we can then Continue. start that process. Get upon yeah. successful okay. yeah, background, blah, blah, blah. I, I think time is negotiation. Of the essence. Yeah. yeah. Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be the earliest. Well, because it's 7.20. If I do it for Wednesday, it has to be anytime after. It won't be at 8 p.m. at night. So I would say either Thursday or Friday. Thursday, yeah, twenty fifth. Yeah, um, in the turn the day or PM. 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 Yeah, anything. PM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which day? That's uh, Thursday to twenty. Thursday. Yeah. Six PM. Yeah, that sounds good. I will make it for you guys. I will. I cannot be. Yeah, Thursday. That not that that matters. I'll post oh, okay. the agenda yeah. for you guys. And, sorry. Because I didn't want to necessarily hold it up any further. We already held it up because I've requested doing yeah, no, the site right. visit and having a second interview. What's the date for? I appreciate all of you agreeing to do that. Mm -hmm. Made me feel better anyway. I think I got a lot more information. I don't know if you think you did, Joe. I, I do think that the two together um, both um, made uh, a better impression. I think so, too. I, I truly think they did. So I'm happier with that. Okay. Can we begin conversations on anything after the decision, the vote is made? With? On Thursday? Conversation with? Uh, on what our um, offer. offer will be. Yeah, we should. What we should do is go into executive session right after we make. <clears throat> excuse me, after we make the decision to discuss strategy mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. bargaining. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to have the appointment person here. No, no, no not, not for not for that. Okay. And yeah, we'd be reopening just to close. To close, yeah. We do that. Okay. All right. We got on here FY25 budget. That's just on there if anybody has any things you want to bring up. I did not win the lottery. No. <laughs> Sorry. You were hoping. <laughs> no. Is there anything on the FY25 budget that's still in question? Whether by FinCom or by us. The accountant has made some suggestions. 
interesting my response. Uh, I did. Yeah. I, I think so. My, I, I guess my thought to myself was, I appreciate the suggestion, but uh, I don't agree. Um, I don't know that there's anything, there's no more pairing of the apple or. Well, I don't know what the, what more you're going to pair. Right, right. Um, yep. Without affecting services. Mm -hmm. So. I, I think our services are already bare bone. Um, so. I did go through the entire budget and I made notes. So I'll, I'll give them, well, I guess I came to you because you got the master. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Of what is salary and what is stipend, mm -hmm. so we can get that straightened out once and for all. Yeah, I uh, got those done, and um, there was one other thing. Oh, I slipped my mind. <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> that was you too, huh? <laughs> It'll come back. It'll come back. When the meeting closes. About 2 30 in the morning, it'll come back. I'll say, no, it was. Um, <clears throat> it was nothing, nothing big adding money, nothing. It was just moving something to a different line item. That was it. Um, but no salaries have changed. No. Costs. No, no costs. Insurance the... changes. No. How about with the new librarian? I sent an email uh, requesting they let us know yeah. if there's insurance or not, so we can either put it in or not put it in. But we're meeting her salary requests or their salary requests and hours of work. Well, we agreed to that. Mm -hmm. I know we set up, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure that they yeah, we agreed stayed to that. within it. Um, <clears throat> that 3% might be extra. That's extra for everybody. But I mean, it may not apply to that person. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Um, you remember Alan had put down a line item, I think it was in our budget, holding 27000 for the raises. Has that been removed now that we put the raises I, into the line? I think we mentioned to him at one of the meetings that we did a co-meeting, we ended up making sure we've added the 3%. I thought he had removed that. I right, just double check. Yeah. You see that. The other thing is, in our book, we don't have the school. Okay, I'll get the. And they have a meeting on Thursday right. where budget is uh, is on there. Update. Update. Oh, here's the last. I saw that. I might just email and ask. <clears throat> plan this. So none of these from the recommendations are. Is that the accountant? Yeah. Right. I don't know. Nice thoughts, but we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, I mean, it's my opinion. He's got his opinion. I know you got yours. So, not this year. And, and I think yeah. even the concept of not using free cash and not doing that, it's all beautiful ideas, but not. <clears throat> Practical. It's not practical. It's not practical for any town as long as Prop two and a half is in effect for us. And exactly. And reform is in effect for the school. Mm -hmm. They do not mesh. Right. They've never meshed. And this has been the problem. This is why Paxton is now going into a $1 million override. Yep. Rutland did 2.6. Dudley did one, two, two million. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> at some point in time, the state has got to wake up and readjust these things. I mean, Two and a half is two and a half. There's no cost of living increase there at all, yet there is under every form. So I don't see how they expect us to stay under two and a half if they've got this other thing that goes above two and a half. I, I don't get that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the um, percentage of increase, we are still under. Paxton's percentage of municipal increases, Rotland's percentage of municipal increases. So I'm sorry that we're going to um, access more free cash, 
but we're still below the growth mm -hmm. of, of other towns, which means that we've had to make a decision to not do everything we would right. want to do exactly. or would like to do or need to do. We're So there's been sacrifice um, in that. Yes. And the other thing I just want to put out there is, mention in the FinCon meeting, I'll mention in our meeting, Five years, we have not gone to the two and a half max that we could have done legally. We didn't do that. That has cost us around $280,000. Think of how much free cash we're using, 200,000. We wouldn't be using any free cash if we had just gone to the two and a half limit. And I know the excuse what happens if something happens and you can't raise and appropriate? Well, that's what stabilization is for, to stabilize the funding. I mean, this has been all my training and all my teaching. I don't I don't understand why we didn't do that. This this board is just as guilty as any previous board, because we didn't go over the last two years, three years to the full. <clears throat> so I don't think we ever really looked at it. No, we didn't you know, really. Um, we were doing well enough without having right. to think about that bar, right. but we're now getting to that point. Yeah. Yeah. Next year is going to be even more close than this year. Yes. And we're going to have to make bigger. You are going to have to make bigger decisions <laughs> next year. <laughs> I'm not worried about this year. I'm more concerned about next year. Next year. And and if you look at Rutland and Paxton, they did an education campaign specific to the budget, which is why I reiterate the importance of mm -hmm. that engagement, mm -hmm. not transparency necessarily, but engagement, um, because it, it can't be a surprise. No. Like we're going to be like, okay, we got a budget this year. Um, and, oh, guess what? When we come around to it next year, it's like we're in crisis. We're in crisis this year. We are. Yeah. I agree. We're in crisis this year, but we're going to manage it as best as we can. Assuming nothing else nothing changes. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. But we all know something is going to change somewhere along the line. Yeah. And then we're going to have to take a closer look at it. Yep. <clears throat> We eliminated Council on Aging, the library, and one full-time officer. Just eliminated it. We are still not hitting the increase from the school. That's why we're using free cash. Mm -hmm. Balance it out and maintain the services that we have. Mm -hmm. There are three amendments in the House budget related to Proposition two and a half, um, 98, 114 and 115 maybe, um, that uh, address the fact that municipalities cannot adjust with, a school, with the school budgets. Right. Um, and calling for a study, calling for um, looking at um, the um, minimum contribution, mm -hmm. um, so there are at least three amendments that are calling attention to the fact that um, the budgeting process is uh, already wrought with uh, issues uh, before you even start looking at your municipal budget because of the just the position that the schools are in. Yep. I mean, and the the governors and the House and the Senate are not going to increase at the percentage that inflation is. If they are in the schools. Oh, sure. But as a whole, as a whole, they, they don't. No. And, you know, Quabbin saw a pay cut, a, a reduction in, in um, reimbursement. Well, that's interesting. They, they get a $93,000 cut from the governor. Mm -hmm. They get 163,000 increase from the house. But I think they cut something. Transportation. Something else. I forget what it was. Yeah. It was something else. And now the Senate 
we don't know. We don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. So usually the you know, the mid midterm midpoint. They do. Um, but still, for our budget, it might mean three or four thousand dollars. That is not going to help. It will not. You know. Even <clears throat> even their amendments may not make it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, they had something today that looked at the cost of the amendments. <laughs> and now they're going to, there's all these climate bills that they're going to, like, where's that money coming from? They can't even fund what they should be funding. Right. Right. It's amazing what they put through what they want to put through and they find the money for it, but they can't find the money for the school department. We're stuck with $30 a student mm -hmm. for one of 19 communities in the state at 30. Everybody else is at 104. I don't care how they spin it. It doesn't work. Yeah. You know, the school is getting the rough end of the deal here. So, box. Any other twenty twenty five budget stuff? Make a lottery. Any new business for the board? I don't have any. No. New business? No. Any old business? Uh, just the um, accountant provided some feedback um, on a conversation uh, she had with um, regarding thirty B. Um, I also reached out. I'm waiting on a return call. Yeah, I, I think I said it that night. What we might want to do is just give it into uh, what was it? Combine. Place combine. Mm -hmm. Combine. Mm -hmm. Let them resubmit, mm -hmm. and then it's done correctly. And. Um, both of the two um, people, the two companies that remained are both the same situation. They're both through a third party. Yeah, most of them are. They don't have their own. Yeah, most most oh. are. I think it would be resubmitting, if anything, through the, comp the third party company right. that represents them. each one of them to be in compliance because you can't just sign it. I think that's what she was saying. And it makes sense. You can't sign it. But revise and say, oh, now we're just going to give it to them. It, you kind of have to scratch and start all over. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Well, no, yeah. I know. I'm just yeah, saying no, that you can't. Is. Yeah, you got to start from the beginning. Yep. Yeah. But we've, we've got specs that we know what we want. So we know what to put out there. Um, interestingly, uh, today, I guess the school department started a project to run fiber from here up the road, up Maple Street, Maple, Barry, Lower Barry, Lower Barry, Lower Barry. to the school, fiber. Who's doing it? Who's doing that? Spectrum. Really? Yeah. They were up there working on it today. So, um, that estimate of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to cut down trees and <laughs> put new poles in, I think that's going to be pretty much uh, a joke. Um, so, if Spectrum can add fiber, don't they have to get? They have to get permission from the town to put poles in. Yeah, but what about? I get okay. Not to run the wires. Okay. Poles. As long as they get it permission from National Grid. Well, that's and mm -hmm. Verizon. I was just going to say, yes. you need to talk to them, and they probably did. Wonder how long they took to get that through. So I was going to reach out to the school department, um, but it's interesting that the fiber is right here because I think the fiber comes to the town hall because of the town clerk. The town clerk has a fiber connection. Right. In the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so they're just adding on to what's here. 
Uh -huh. So they're going to use what was brought to the town hall yeah. to get over to the school. Okay. So a little bit further goes to the safety building and the library. So could they do a termination? I I don't I just box yeah it's um it just seems very interesting yeah um how that popped up I guess they called yesterday for a detail oh did they yeah yesterday oh. on a Sunday okay oh huh. hmm. hmm I saw the detail on my way home but I did not see it on my way in I think they were still working on it because I got a call from the chief maybe at ten uh, a little bit before nine thirty asking if that was something to do with us. <laughs> like no not that quick yeah. <laughs> um, although I did get questions from um, who's the guy at um, DLS not the head guy Jared no it's like the assistant John yes Sean Cronin, Cronin yeah. he actually emailed me asking me uh, a couple of questions about our grant application so I said, appreciate it. We're a small rural community. We're doing the best we can. And he said, I thank you so much for your input. So he's the guy I deal with. He's very familiar with OKM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was at the lieutenant governor's meeting. Hmm. I think he's the deputy director. The deputy, yeah. Yeah. So it's nice that he's um must be involved in that. Yeah, he's yeah. he's kind of a hands-on guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we dealt with for this the IT grant as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to Blythe and said, "Hey, what what should I do here?" Um, and she gave me advice. We haven't gotten a bill yet. Oh yes, we did get a bill for um, nine hundred thirty-five. So I think it was like five and a half hours. But I don't know if they're because of the way they bill. It it was right up to the date that she submitted it. So I think it's all in that bill. Okay. Um, so while well under the 10 hours that were allocated through ARPA funds. So well, will there be more after this? I hope not. Probably not. Okay. But still this grant is a hundred thousand bucks. Oh, it's 200 and I'm mean, sorry, 180 ish. Mm -hmm. 180,000. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause yeah. we, it was going to be 80 something. And then we got the $400,000 estimate for right. <laughs> national grid to cut down trees and put new poles in. Um, but we just went with a hundred thousand as an estimate instead right. of the 400,000. Right. Because they, they thought we had 54 poles and we had 24 poles. Right. That's something else that people should know too, is that we have applied for and received the past three years, well over $1.1 million in grants. That's police, fire. Mm -hmm. That does not include your chapter 90. That's even above that. Your trip, your tip monies, all that stuff. That's above that figure that we just said. And there's more money out there. Right. Um, but we've got to have the resources to put the ideas and plans and then work on those grants. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that ends up saving operational costs in a budget. Yep. Could you use the charter equipment for what? Just ID yourself. Um, use East Hill Road. Could we use the charter facility to run the cable that you guys are talking about? Contract it through charter and save a whole bunch of money. Well, so. We wouldn't, town of OKM isn't going to pay any money uh, other than the 5% if we get the grant. What's the 5% represent? It was going to be like $9,000. So, but this is $180,000. And it comes, it would come from ARPA. Um, but Spectrum, all of the work throughout the town, they contracted Phoenix. Yeah. Um, so I don't even know if. If spec was it actual spectrum trucks doing this job? No, it it was so not. they probably subcontract to Phoenix. But it probably wasn't Phoenix, does it? Was it? I, I didn't even see Phoenix on it. Yeah, it wasn't it was a name I didn't hadn't seen before. Like N E E T C or something. It just looked like a work oh, truck. Okay. All right. The question is could you use their existing lines 
for what we're, for what we're trying to achieve? I don't think so because uh, police ha needs a separate um, secure line um, and um, the way it's going is it's going from wherever um, charter is to the school. We need it to start at the police station. Uh, otherwise, apparently, we would have to pay a lot of money in, on um, software and um, equipment to go the opposite direction. Um, so if they start it at the police station, according to CM Geeks, they only have to protect that section of the fiber line with the high because of all the CGIS. Um, whereas if they went the other way, you have to make the whole thing secure. Um, but it, it, I am going to follow up with the school department and ask them what they're doing and what was the process and yeah, and why they're doing it. Because they probably already have permits to do these polls. And how much is it costing them? Is it costing them? Yeah. yeah. And and are we paying for it? Is it in the school yeah. budget? Well, yeah. <laughs> Or did they get a grant? Probably got a grant. Because this grant, they suggested we add the school. So um, I'm just wondering what grant they got. So would you eliminate, the, like the school is already added on with what they're doing now? Like if you guys got the grant for. The only thing is, so their fiber to the school is for Quabbin internet. Sure. Right. So since it's our building, mm -hmm. wouldn't we want to have access to town of Oakham internet, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. town of Oakham cameras? Right. Um, right. So I think it's to our benefit to still yeah. run our line because um, they I know that their IT person said they wouldn't be able to share right. with yeah. us. Right. That makes sense. So I am going to look into if there is anything, any cost savings because they're doing that. I think we're going to find out that there's no trees that need to be cut and no new poles <laughs> that need to be put in. So we just have to pay the fee for them to fill, to fill out an application and approve us, which originally they estimated at $4,900 <laughs> instead of That's $450. That's what Phoenix um, thought it would be. Because you made too many phone calls, you jacked the price up. <laughs> At, at the eleventh hour. At the eleventh hour. Okay. Anything else on the hold? It's been meeting this week. Do we know? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Everyone's gonna look. I'll look on the calendar. I was wondering if they were going to be discontinuing their weekly meetings. Are we going to be discontinuing our weekly meetings? Once the budget and the articles are done. There is no meeting scheduled oh, next sure. Monday. I mean, sorry, next, this Wednesday. Okay. Um, Could I put that on the next agenda too, the articles? Oh, if I may, I did. Uh, First is there next meeting. Uh, contacted uh, town council. He is um, in receipt of the email for the bylaws in another email. He's going to be reviewing that and should have an answer um, by the end of this week. So hopefully for the next meeting, you guys can have further discussion on his input. Okay. Yeah. And then the bylaws, bylaw review, an initial, so that was one of the items. Are there any other bylaws that we wanna talk about? And then creating, reopening, uh, a bylaw review opportunity um, in anticipation of the special town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for the special. After yeah. the annual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get through the. <laughs> right. Stun the project. <laughs> no kidding. Okay. Although I think we've already each done our own. So. Maybe for a volunteer group could be at their summer project. Right. Oh yeah, that's what I meant for the yeah. Yeah. yeah review committee ish. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my notes. You got your notes. 
Okay. Uh, any public session? Yes, or not? No. I got a track minutes. because sometimes well, like yeah. something. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's in the back. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Are you good? Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 749. 749.